guys, Mr. Backberg here. Lesson 1.2 is about graphs of equations. This is part one. Part two will be coming later on. In part one, we've got three different objectives. Very first thing we're going to do is we're going to be given some points, and we have to check if those things are solutions to an equation. Number two, we're going to sketch some graphs of equations. And then number three, we're going to look at finding x and y intercepts of an equation, of a graph, algebraically. I guess we should talk about what a solution actually is. Uh, so you can see I've got the math definition of a solution there. It says it's a value or a point that makes an equation true when we substitute or when we plug it into our equation. So down below we're given the equation y equals 8x minus 5 and I'm asking you guys to check three different points. Okay, First thing we're going to check is the point 1 comma 3. Okay, So remember when we're given these ordered pairs the first number is an x value and the second number is a y value. Well, we're checking if this is a solution, so we're going to go ahead and substitute these things into our equation in the appropriate places. Okay, so where this y is right here, we're just going to plug in our 3, set that equal to 8, here's our x, so let's plug in 1, and then I guess we have to subtract 5. Well, if we start simplifying this down or evaluating some of these things, 8 times 1 is just 8, so now our equation says 3 equals 8 minus 5. And if we carry out this subtraction on the right-hand side, 8 minus 5 is 3. So we get 3 equals 3. So we're trying to figure out if this thing is true. Well, if we look at it, 3 is equal to 3. Yeah, that's true. So that means, yes, this one is a solution. Okay, The point 1, 3 is a solution to the equation y equals 8x minus 5. If we move on to the next ordered pair, Okay, again, just plugging in information, here's our x value, there's our y value. So we're going to go 4 is equal to 8 times negative 2 and then minus 5. Well, again, if we evaluate this, left-hand side stays the same. So 4 equals well, 8 times negative 2 is negative 16, and then we have to subtract 5 from that. I think we can see we're starting to run into some issues here. Uh, negative 16 minus 5, we're going to get more negative, so 4 is equal to negative 21. Okay, and that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. We're looking for something to be true. Well, 4 doesn't equal negative 21. So that one doesn't work. Last one on the page, we've got 4 and negative 3. So again, there's our x value. There's our y value. So we're going to go negative 3 equals 8 times 4 and then minus 5. Okay, well, left-hand side stays the same again. So negative 3 equals 8 times 4 is 32 minus 5, and 32 minus 5, if we carry out that subtraction, uh, we get 27. Okay, and negative 3 doesn't equal 27, so that one again is not a solution. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one out on your own. Okay, you're given the equation y equals 10x minus 7. So if we go ahead and plug in our information, again, here's our x value, here's our y value. Okay, so we go 13 equals 10 times 2 minus 7. Well, 10 times 2 is 20, and subtract 7. So left-hand side is 13, right-hand side is 13. So that first one works out for us. Checking out the next one. Again, here's our x value, here's our y value. So we go negative 3 equals 10 times negative 1, and then minus 7. Well, 10 times negative 1 is negative 10, so negative 3 equals negative 10 minus 7. Whoops, that's supposed to be a 10. And if we carry out that subtraction, negative 3 equals, well, this is going to get more negative since we've got two negatives going on here, uh, negative 17. And that one does not work. Next thing we're going to get into is a little bit of graphing of equations. And there's three basic strategies that we're going to use. Okay, Along the way, you've done a lot of graphing, and you may have been taught some shortcuts to help you out. I'm talking things like y equals mx plus b, and using that setup to help you graph out a linear equation. Okay, so you might have some kind of shortcut to help you. If you don't have a shortcut, then you might need to move on to number two, which is to create an x and y table to come up with some points or ordered pairs and plot those out. And if all else fails, number three, go ahead and use your graphing calculator. First equation that we're going to graph out is y equals negative 3x plus 2. And I'm thinking about those strategies that showed up on the last page. Uh, this is a y equals mx plus b equation, so we're going to use that shortcut to help us out a little bit. Uh, remember, we, when we're given a y equals mx plus b equation, we always start out with this b value. That's our y-intercept. 
and we plot that point out first. We've got a y-intercept at 2. So we go up two spaces, plot a point. Next thing we look at is this m value, which is our slope. Okay, remember slope is like rise over run. So that tells us how far we need to go up or down, and then how far we need to go left or right. So we're given a slope of negative 3. Okay, that's just a whole number. So I'm going to go ahead and put it over 1 so we can see this rise over run thing going on here. So since it's negative 3, we need to go down 3 spaces from this first point that we plotted. And then it's over 1, so we go to the right 1. So down 3 over 1. And we can do that a couple of times uh, just to give us a better picture of our line. Uh, we could actually even go the other direction. We could go up 3 and left 1. Remember that's still negative since we're moving left along this x axis. And then we just have to draw on the line. There's our graph for the equation y equals negative 3x plus 2. With this next equation, I'm going to use a different strategy to graph this one out, uh, just so we can see more things happening. So we're going to make an x and y chart for this one, come up with some ordered pairs that we can plot out, and then we'll draw our graph that way. So we're looking at the equation y equals 1 minus x. So like I said, x and y chart, uh, we're just going to plug in some x values. And the x values I'm going to use are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Remember, the more points you plot out, the more accurate your graph will be. So in order to get our y values, we just need to take these x values and plug them into our equation. Okay, so I'm going to start out by plugging in this negative 2. So we get y equals 1 minus negative 2. Well, double negative, we know it turns into addition, so we get y equals 3. So there's our y value. So now we plot out this point, negative 2, 3. So we go left 2, up 3. Then we plug in our next x value, it's negative 1. So y equals 1 minus negative 1. Again, double negative turns into addition. 1 plus 1 is 2. So we go left 1 up 2. Okay, if we plug in 0, y equals 1 minus 0. Well, 1 minus 0 is just 1. Okay, we might see a pattern developing here, but I'm going to keep plugging in values. Next one we plug in is 1. So y equals 1 minus 1, we get 0. And then our last x value we're plugging in is 2, so y equals 1 minus 2. Well, 1 minus 2 is negative 1, so we go over 2 and down 1. And then again, we draw on our line. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one out on your own. We're given the equation y equals x squared minus 2. I've got an x and y chart here. I'm going to use that to help me out. Uh, and then I'm actually going to check this one on my calculator just to make sure... I get the right picture. So if we plug in negative 2 for our x value, well negative 2 squared is 4 and 4 minus 2 is 2. So we should get the point negative 2, 2. Next x value is negative 1. If we square that it's positive 1 minus 2 we get negative 1. Plug in 0, 0 squared is 0, minus 2 is negative 2. Uh, if we plug in 1, 1 squared is 1, minus 2 is negative 1 and then we'll go back up to 2. So we should get this nice uh, parabola shape for our graph. There we go, so y equals and then x squared minus 2 graph. There's our picture looks pretty similar to what we have. Their lines are a little nicer than mine, uh, but we get the idea. Last thing we're doing is finding intercepts of a graph. Uh, so remember an intercept is a point where our graph crosses or touches one of our axes, either the x-axis or the y-axis. Uh, we're going to do this without drawing the picture though. We're just going to look at the equations and do some different things with the equations. Okay, so number one says in order to find an x-intercept, we're going to plug in a 0 for our y value and then go ahead and solve our equation. Then in order to find our y-intercepts, we're going to plug in a 0 for our x value and then go ahead and solve that one. So let's look at the equation y equals x squared minus 4. We're going to find both the x and the y-intercepts. Okay, so we're going to start off with those x-intercepts. Okay, remember in order to find x-intercepts, we were said we were going to plug in a 0 for our y value and then go ahead and solve. Okay, so we'll replace the y with a 0. So we got 0 equals x squared minus 4. And now we're solving. We're trying to get x all by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and add this 4 over to the other side. So now we've got 4 equals x squared. 
And then in order to get rid of this squared on our x, we have to take the square root of both sides. Now remember, be careful when you're square rooting a number because there is a positive answer and there's a negative answer. Okay, so we get two and negative two. And then we can go ahead and write these out as ordered pairs. Uh, we've got two and zero, okay? Two is the solution when we plugged in zero for y, but also we've got negative two, zero, okay? Because negative two is also a solution when we plugged in zero for our y value. If we want to find that y-intercept, okay, remember we said we're going to plug in 0 for our x value. This one might be a little easier on us. So y equals 0 squared minus 4. Well, 0 squared is 0 minus 4. We get y equals negative 4. So again, writing this one out as an ordered pair, our x value this time was 0, and the solution, the answer we got was negative 4. This is the last example, so go ahead and pause the video and try this one out on your own. Find both those x-intercepts and those y-intercepts. So starting with those x-intercepts, remember we plug in a 0 for our y value. So we get 0 equals x cubed minus 4x. Now we're trying to solve for x, so we have to think of some different solving strategies that we have. I guess what I see going on is I see we need to do a little factoring with this. We see a common x term here, so we just factor that out. Okay, So we get 0 equals x times x squared minus 4. Okay, now that we've got this factored out, we just grab each individual factor and set it equal to 0. First one's pretty easy, it just says x equals 0. So that gives us the ordered pair 0, 0. Okay, our x value is 0 when our y value is 0. This one should look really familiar to us. This is pretty much what we had on the last slide, okay, with x squared minus 4 being equal to 0. So we should get uh, plus or minus 2 for our x values. Um, so writing that out as an ordered pair, we actually can just use that plus or minus two uh, when we write out that ordered pair. There is actually two things happening here. There's the positive two and zero. There's also the negative two and zero. For our y-intercept, uh, again, plug in zero for x, so we get y equals zero cubed minus four times zero. Well, zero cubed is zero, four minus zero, or four times zero is zero couple of zeros subtracted, we just get y equals zero. So our y-intercept is at zero, zero, or the origin. That's it as far as this video goes. Uh, make sure you guys fill out the Google form, which as always is going to be linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.